Okay, I know, I know, I know, it's Oracle. Something, something, Oracle. I was going to say something, Oracle. I hear you, I get you. But today we're going to look at Oracle Linux 9.3, how to install it, and how to configure it for a desktop environment. So let's go by install. What is Oracle Linux? You ask, well, Oracle Linux, of course, is a Linux distribution that is based on Red Hat Linux, or rather Oracle Enterprise Linux is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So since Red Hat 9.3 has come out, Enterprise, uh, this is, of course, Oracle's uh, 9.3, which you can uh, download this uh, for free and use free. Um, so, standard installer, English, English, that's fine. Okay, those of you that are used to Red Hat or Fedora, uh, type this just for recognize the installer. So here, the time zone is all fine. Installation source, local media, software selection. Um, then I've got server with GUI. I mean, that's, that's an option, or you could do uh, workstation. So because we're going to install this today as a workstation and not as a server, um, we could even do a <laughs> custom uh, operating system and then just base it on there. But I'm going to do workstation and uh, going to choose a couple of options here. So I'm going to do the GNOME applications, right? Uh, internet applications. Office Suite. We shouldn't really require too much development tools, if any. You can also install them afterwards. So yeah, GNOME applications, internet applications, Office Suite. I'll just add that for your management as well. Let's say done. Cool. Uh, destination, this is fine. Automatic configuration. That's right, I'm going to do that. Uh, okay, done. So if we want to enable system, or if we want to record system crashes and everything, we can. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to untick that. Right, network and host name is all fine here. Uh, host name, I'll just call it uh, Oracle WS for workstation. I'll apply that. Security profile. We are, so if we were to harden the system, so apply specific uh, additional uh, regulatory requirements, you could select some of these. Uh, we're not doing that today. We're just going to switch that off and uh, say done. So there's not going to be any security profile. Let's create a user. So dash, a strong password, right? Um, password I'm going to make this uh, user administrator aka make it part of the wheel group or pseudo so this is it right and we're not going to have a, a specific root account so if I don't add a root password there will be no root account we'll have to do things through pseudo which is generally the, the standard of using a desktop environment I'm going to say begin installation and it's going to automatically uh, set up the system we're going to let it uh, do the software installation and I'll come back once it's finished this portion. Okay, so let's reboot. Okay, so let's log in. Uh, standard using Wayland, known classic, or X11 display server. I'll just use Wayland for now. Log in. Okay, we don't need to take a tour of this. Right, and as you can see, it's all the pretty buttons and pretty basic. Uh, in install over here. So I was to uh, yeah, yeah fetch isn't even installed yet. All right, that's fine. So let's go to settings. And it's settings, of course. We are using Oracle Linux. We're using GNOME 40.4 hours. Of course, it's an older version. Because remember, this the main aim of this, of course, is to be stable for. 
uh, online service, um, etc., where you're not going to go and change your applications very often, etc., for stability and all of that type of stuff. So that is something, of course, to bear in mind. So a couple of things. So first, I'm going to just hit in F update. Which of course is the package manager for Oracle Linux. Okay, and Oracle Linux by the by out the box uh, uses the Oracle Unbreakable kernel, which is basically the Linux kernel with a couple of additional patches on it. And if you have specific software, you're not necessarily going to need it. Uh, you could use the normal Linux kernel, uh, but they are supposed to be pretty much. Uh, compatible with each other so we shouldn't really need to make many changes to it or we shouldn't really have to change it okay so now we've got an update i'm going to do sudo enf install neofetch and of course we can't find neofetch because it's an additional application that we will have to have additional repos for it's always important to keep that in mind and of course, if you were us to browse software, uh, you'll see here the software repos that are available, um, which ones are available, which ones aren't. So here they've got additional stream packages, right? That they have made available. So I'd also enable the firmware service uh, so you can update your device's firmwares uh, if you need to etc so i can do that of course there's all sorts of additional things one can one can do um let's close that so i can have firefox and of course talking about the unbreakable network and all that additional stuff you can do which you don't really need to do today okay so one of the things we're going to do is go to gnome extensions Right, shell extensions. And let's say we want to first add browse extensions. So we'll just add that and just refresh a page. Um, and the idea here is in case we want to add a couple of uh, tweaks to GNOME to make it a bit more home or user friendly, we can do that here if we want to. We can even install over here GNOME tweaks. So we can install that uh, as well. So we'll install GNOME Tweaks. Let's open it up. Right. Okay, so our appearance. Um, what I'm going to do is application. So I'll make it dark. First will be the same icons, the same for now. Okay. General. Top bar is okay. If we wanted a batch of percentage we can add. Uh, I'm going to add a... Minimize and maximize options here. And I'm going to close that. And let's say you want a really easy, like dash to dock or dash to panel, which is pretty popular, just to give it a more traditional desktop uh, feeling to it. Right. Um, you can just hit the on button, click install, and uh, here we go. We can also go back and let's say we want a menu so it can we must look at the arc menu hit install okay so here we would have this so let's just minimize here and let's uh configure this thing so dash to panel settings okay so what i'm gonna do here is it's got show the applications button so if i hit not visible and we'll automatically go here if we want activity so we can click there so we can do that instead um, you can make the icons bigger smaller choose where you want to run them but we don't need to tweak it back to that degree at the arc menu so buttons its appearance what type of icon do we want here? Uh, we could pick, um, you know, 
custom. We could even pick a custom icon instead. So let's say I want to choose something like, I don't know, cloud. We do that. Um, and if I want to make my icon a bit bigger so it looks in line with the others, here we go. So now we have a more traditional type of setup going on over here. with traditional applications so that uh, so that's that's a very quick way of getting that type of stuff done here um, of course if we wanted to add custom icons we could if we want to if we don't necessarily need to do that uh, but if we do just go back to num extensions and you can just do user themes you could install that and then of course install it to your uh, install themes to the normal um, local folders as one used in the past okay so another important thing is because this is mainly for an enterprise type of thing a lot of your normal applications you might not be able to find and a good way to work around that is of course to use fat packs now a lot of people don't like fat packs uh, but it is Definitely a common way to package an application and have it available in different uh, distributions. And in the case of like this, where you have your base system as, you know, enterprise backed and, uh, but all the applications though, uh, flat pack can then of course can install newer applications uh, that way. So you, that way you can get the best of both worlds. So of course, in this case, um, we are going to set it up and here we can just literally just take a look at uh, well actually it should all pretty much be the same um, so let's see if that does work black pack is installed by default on red hat enterprise likes work session on the newer so let's just get the flat hub repository file and yes just click install so it is also by default on oracle linux Flat up uh, or flat packs are installed, so that's that. Um, so if I was to open up the software center again from scratch and go to software repos, it should, in theory, actually start uh, also giving us uh, some applications from the flat hub store and there you go so now let's say the whole lot of applications we didn't have access to earlier so let's say we want to get something that's work whatever that may be you can just let it load for the first time and let it take its time um just obviously just uh in the beginning so in this case, let's say we want to try uh, Vivaldi browser. Okay, it's only sources of a flat pack. We just click install, and it will uh, download itself and install it. Okay, so that portion is done and uh, installed. So if I hit open, of course, it's going to install the. Uh, it's a sort of flat pack and it should you know continue like any other system and of course it could install the steam flat pack as well and you know turn it into gaming but what if you actually want some additional packages like you really want new fetch as an example well on enterprise support distributions you get extra packages for enterprise linux which is basically um making some of the fedora packages because of, of course fedora is more for the desktop uh, type of system available for red hat enterprise and compatible distributions which of course that's what we're using right now we are using one of those so what i'm going to do is show you uh what to do here and how this works so we're going to use these commands here that's meant for alma and Rocky. Let's do sudo dnf install epal. Okay, so we don't actually need to 
config set enabled CRB, we just need to do uh, this here. And because we're doing EPA release, uh, Oracle has their own on the back end. So now we can do sudo dmf update. And you actually see now it's pulling in the updates as well. And as well as Oracle Linux 9, the packages for development. So, yes, it's an update as well. And if all went well, if I do a nice sudo dmf install me a fetch it's available so now we can just do me a fetch and here we go we using oracle 9 linux uh, we're using the uh patch kernel and uh we've installed uh, we have access to some additional packages as well can't find the memory usage but again, yeah, the shooter, you can use this like a, generally any other distro. Right, and even if I show you again the software manager, and I was to show you the software repos out of the box now. Um, stream packages, base, EPO packages for development. Um, and there you go. We have an updated system that you can use and uh, install your applications from Flatpaks and Flathub and uh, additional applications should also not be available uh, in the repos. So folks, thank you uh, so much for watching. Uh, leave your comments below, let me know what you think. Um, and as always, bye for now. Mm -hmm.